Hey guys, John with you here, and I'm trying to decide what is going to be for supper tonight. And what I'm showing you right now is what I came up with out of the fridge and out of the freezer. Now the cabinet. It's not looking too good here. I'm only, uh, only responsible for cooking for a, a few people tonight. Tanner's up at the BG game. Uh, Sherry's on vacation. I got a little Bud Light to help me out tonight. Mashed potatoes, can of corn, you know, 1.24 pounds of Hamburg, some garlic, some onion. I'm thinking maybe shepherd's pie. It's not, not one of my favorites. And I'd like to have more potato than that. I have a hard time not thinking big when I'm cooking. And this just seems small, but hey, wish me luck, and uh, we'll see what comes of it. Okay, first thing I gotta do, I guess, is I gotta thaw out this Hamburg. So, good old trusty microwave. It's got a bunch of stuff in it, so the dogs wouldn't eat it. Oh boy. All kinds of stuff in there. Here we go. Hamburg's in the microwave. Dethaw by weight. Auto defrost, one pound, start, and I'm going to forget about that now. Next thing is going to be cutting up this onion, some garlic, and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, I got my hamburg thawing out in the microwave, and uh, my biggest problem here is going to be demonstrating anything, trying to hold this stupid iPhone. Um, I've got to crush that. I've got to crush this thing of garlic. Buddy of mine at work grows some phenomenal garlic. I mean, look at the size of one clove. It's like a red German garlic. I've got to try to smash it with that knife. I've never tried it one-handed, but you want to go this way. You don't want to go anywhere near the blade, the cutting edge, you know. I suppose we can give it a shot. <coughs> Yeah, so once you get it smashed, you break out all the oils and stuff, and then just chop it all up. You can do the same thing with the onion. Slice it and then chop it. Be right back with you. Okay, guys, so the onion's chopped up. The garlic is uh, chopped up as well. I set that aside in a bowl because you don't want to put that in too early because garlic tends to brown and burn so easy. And uh, my hamburger has finished defrosting in the microwave. I got my cast iron skillet here. Oh shit, I, I don't know if I reminded Sherry I was out of uh, olive oil. Oh, look at that, brand new thing of olive oil. Boy, she's good to me. I think my last video I showed you I was out of, uh, I was out of camp mix. And Bang, she gave me a uh, brand new uh, thing of camp mix. So here we go. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna throw these onions in the pan and then the burger. I'm gonna brown them together and uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay, onions are sauteing in the cast iron pan. The hamburger's ready to go. My next dilemma is the amount of potato that I have. See that container? Cut that thing in half and picture how, how much it can spread out. I found this one corning ware that's nice and deep. That would probably work for a small serving. This thing here, I don't think I have enough potato to, to fill it, you know? Looking at that amount. So, this is gonna be a big decision here tonight. Now the burger's in there sauteing with the onions now. If you look at these two pans, I can, I can probably cover this guy almost twice, right, with the depth of that. If I do it over here, it's not quite going to work. It's going to be all potato, so screw it. Command decision is right there. Okay, guys, so the uh, onions all cooked down, the hamburg browned. Now's the point where I'm going to add in the garlic. 
And I'm going to add in just a little bit of camp mix for seasoning. Flavor up the hamburg a little bit. I'm going to stir this all up. And when I come back, I'm going to show you what we're going to do about this grease in this pan with this hamburg. And that could get actually kind of comical for what I'm about to tell you. So hold on. Okay guys, we've got the, the burgers all browned up, the garlic's been mixed in, the onions are all softened up. We're ready to go with this burger. But what do we do with all this grease? Obviously you got to get that grease out of there. So over here I have my pasta strainer. And over here I have a sink with a peg. And my buddy Mike Parquette, the plumber, is just cringing. He would rip my friggin head off if he knew that I was sharing this with you you definitely don't want to do this if you are on a septic system at home you want to put some means of capturing the grease underneath the strainer but the fucking rebel that I am I'm gonna show you what I do I'm gonna get the tap water really cold I've got a bunch of uh, roughage down in my pig here We've got a garbage disposal. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the strainer. I can't do it while I'm holding my phone. I'm going to have to design a phone holder or something. And then I'm going to let this cold water run. And then I'm going to run my peg and run it with cold water. You definitely do not want to do this with hot water. Because that will just send the problem further down the pipe. And then a guy like Pucka, my buddy, can't help you. Be right back. There you go, guys. We got the cold water. Well pulling around in the sink. You can see all the grease. Because it's cold water, it's going to make that grease solidify. I'm on a municipality. And, uh, I'm going to jack the shake. And Michael Pocket hates me right now. <laughs> so then the next step to cleaning that all up in your sink and your drain would be go with Dawn Dish... Um, yeah. Dawn. Same stuff they clean all the birds up and the oil spills on the ocean. Put a little of that down there. Take your water over to hot. <clears throat> you can take your brush, clean up your sink. Switch it over to cold, let it run for a while. And then if you have any problems, call my buddy Pucka. Be right back at you. Okay, guys, what I've done here is I've added the, uh, the the burger mixture back into the pan. I took my leftover potatoes and I nuked them and stirred them up. What I'm doing now is I'm getting a cornstarch mixture ready. That's cold water running. Most of you guys don't see this with your shepherd's pie. What I'm going to do is add some meat, uh, add some water to the meat here in the pan. I'm going to turn my burner up and what I'm going to do is make a gravy. Now I don't know if you've ever had a dry shepherd's pie but it sucks when you have one. Um, I know it, I haven't made shepherd's pie in years. I've had it, had it a lot you know over the years we had it a lot when the kids were growing up. Um, but I don't like a dry shepherd's pie. I know some people overcome it with cream style corn what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a gravy so I just poured some corn starch in a cup I'm going to mix it up with a fork I'm an old flour guy that's how I do my gravy usually corn starch thickens a lot faster um, so it's something to get used to if you're not used to it and then I gotta, I gotta check my gravy making ingredients here. I gotta go up in the cupboard again. 
One thing I always get nervous about is running out of gravy master. I'm pretty sure we got one. There it is right there. Every kitchen's gonna have this. Right here, gravy master. I don't know if you guys like cooking beef roast, but that's a magic ingredient whether you're cooking pork, pork roast, beef roast, making sauces like I'm going to show you. Got to have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this mixture in and then I'm going to flavor it up with some of that gravy master. Okay, so in case I wasn't clear, when you pour your cornstarch in your mug and you mix it with water, cold, cold, cold water. Now we've got the water in the meat mixture. Just going to pour some of this in. Cornstarch thickens really quick. You just got to wing it. You got you to see how it's going to come out. See, that's already thickening really quickly. And what you can do is you can add cold water if you have to if it thickens too quick. See, uh, I poured in too much too quick. You don't want to you don't want to create a paste. You want to create something that is uh, going to be kind of thick, but not too liquidy too. Yeah, this actually might work. This might settle out. So then, what I'm going to do is you take your gravy master, shake it really good. I really got to do something about this freaking handheld phone bullshit. All right. I'm going to pour some of this in. This will darken it really quick. Don't be afraid of that. <clears throat> Adds a lot of flavor. Now I can already see with a thickening agent handle. I may have to add some water. So I'm going to do that right now. That's the thing guys, when you're doing a gravy, if things get out of hand, starts getting too thick, add some water, if it starts getting too thin, you can add some of your thickener. The whole reason for adding cornstarch, flour, whatever you're using in a cup with water, cold, cold water and mixing it ahead of time, is it should solve your problems as far as getting any kind of lumps. So yeah, this is looking kind of dark. The consistency, I'm kind of liking. Um, you kind of have a little bit of gravy with your hamburg. And I think what I'm gonna do is stay away from the cream style corn, go with the regular corn, pour this in the bottom of the pan. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I've got the uh, Hamburg mixture all, all spread out in the in this pan. Here's my can of corn. If you got a piece of shit can opener like me, you got to friggin' fight with these friggin' things all the time. So I'm gonna try to dump this corn out. Spread it out with a spatula. Now keep in mind, this is just a, a small batch of shepherd's pie. Well, I only got to feed a couple people here. And we're doing this with leftovers other than taking out the can of corn out of the cupboard and uh, hamburger out of the freezer. And here's my batch of potatoes. I'll be right back with you when it's all spread out. Okay guys, I just spread out this potato over the top of this mixture and I'm not happy with my pan selection. I miscalculated. Um, it's going to be a very thin layer of potato, but we're winging it with leftovers. And uh, hey, it'll be a good test. I'm going to throw it in the oven at 350 until everything's bubbly and brown. And then uh, we'll see how it comes out. Thanks guys and uh, take care and happy cooking.